today, 46-year-old Nick Varner, who started playing at age five in his dad's pool room in Indiana, tries to reach the final round of the Players' Championship in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. The three-time Billiard Digest Player of the Year is off to a red-hot start in 94. He's currently ranked second in the world. His opponent is not ranked. This is Danny Harriman, a newcomer on the Pro Billiards Tour. Harriman, whose slight frame reminds many of Johnny Archer, is in his first full year on the tour. Today, the young man from Missouri is about to show the best in the world what he can do in a semifinal match. The Players' Championship, the first major event on the Pro Billiards Tour for 1994. Semifinal match coming up today, matching Danny Harriman and Nick Varner. Welcome to Valley Forge, everyone. I'm John Sanders. I'm joined by the rifleman, Buddy Hall. Let's talk about Danny Harriman, a new name maybe to some people. A uh, new name to a lot of people. Danny is a, a great little player. He's from Springfield, Missouri. He's played in five or six pro events, finished well in the money in all of them. Uh, breaks the balls like King Kong. He's going to be a hard person to beat. But he has a hard opponent to beat, certainly in the veteran Nick Varner. He has a great opponent to beat. Nick Varner is uh, one of the finest players in the world today. Uh, on the tour right now, he's about as hot as anybody. Uh, if Danny makes any mistakes, Nick will make him pay for them. The problem is the kid might not make any mistakes. But would a young player be more nervous going against a veteran like Varner with a name? Well, yeah, he's going to have to be a little more nervous. Uh, he's the first time on TV. He's going to sputter a little bit, but uh, I look for him to do well. And it's the first of the major events on the Pro Billiards Tour for 1994, the Players' Championship. We have semifinal number one coming up, Danny Harriman and Nick Varner. And here are the four semifinalists, Varner, Harriman, and then later, Siegel and West, the four that have reached this round. Let's talk about the rules of play, buddy, for the semifinal match. Well, it's a race to nine. Uh, and there's no shot clock. I've Foul on all balls, it's ball in hand. That means if any part of your clothing touches, that's a foul. It's alternate break. Push outs only after the break. And the referee has the final decision. That means the referee has all the power. And the two players getting set for the lag for the opening break. It is Danny Harriman on the right, Nick Varner on the left. Very close, but won by Nick Varner. So Varner will have the opening break. This is a guy who's kind of run hot and cold. He's had great years, then he'll slide back a little bit. Then he comes on again. It looks like he's coming on again in 94. Right, he is coming on. Nicky's playing great right now. He's going to be really hard to beat. He won earlier this year down in Kentucky. What about his break to start? Well, he, he broke them really well. It looks like he may have a, a two nine combination here. Uh, he, he broke them really well. He made a ball on the break, and it looks like it. Uh, he's got a really nice shot at the nine. Setting it up for the combination. Just like that. <laughs> Nick Varner with that nine ball combo takes a one zero lead in this race to nine. That's always a nice way to start. I was going to say, that's got to be a great <laughs> way to start a match. one nothing. Varner has the lead over Harriman. And remember, the alternate break, it'll be Danny Harriman. Now, in a lot of tournaments, the winner keeps right on the table, doesn't he? That's right. Uh, the winner can win uh, all nine games. He can win nine games in a row without uh, you being able to shoot. Uh, I kind of like this format, uh, break about. It's uh, alternate break. It gives, seems like it gives everybody the same amount of times to the table. Danny's from the Show Me State. He's from Springfield, Missouri. Hard to believe, it was only a few months ago he played in his first professional tournament. Now he's reached the semifinal. It's really saying a lot for a person that's unranked. And that was a good break for him. The first game going to Nick Varner. Semifinal number one here in the Players' Championship. Uh, he has a, a long shot here at the two. He, it looks like he's going to have to come across the top of the ball. It's, if he can go straight up table with the cue ball, that would be wonderful. He's got a tough, he's got a test right here on the two to start with. 
certainly not the same kind of start that Nick Varner had when he was <laughs> looking at that 2-9 combination. No, there's a lot of difference. Those young eyes prevail, though. There's an easy shot at the three, but of course the thing you have to do is keep thinking not just of that ball, but the one after and the one after that. Right. You have to play position uh, really to an angle. You play the three in, play the four in in order to get to the five. Uh, he may elect to go for the combination here. Uh, th that's a tough route to take, but that may be his only option. Well, he elected to come underneath. which is a good shot. I prefer doing it that way over trying to play the combination. The seven setting a little too far away from the pocket. Continuing his good start, Danny Harriman. Danny's a, a, a fast player. He, it doesn't take him long to make up his mind. Uh, he'll just come down here, try to get straight in on the seven. He'll probably come two rails out of the corner trying to get straight in on the seven so he doesn't have to do anything to play position on the nine. In great shape now for the seven. All he has to do is stop right there and play the nine in. And he'll show us he came to play. Absolutely. This is game number two of this race, race to nine. The break and the run out. That's the answer from Harriman. He gets even with Nick Varner. It's a game apiece in this race to nine. Stay with us. We're coming back with more of the Pro Billiards Tour on Prime. Welcome back once again here on Prime, our coverage of the Players' Championship semifinal number one with the break in game three, Nick Varner. Oh, he came up dry. And that will give Danny Harriman a chance now. What kind of a table does he have to work on? Uh, he has a nice layout here. He can, uh, he can play the one in this uh, upper left-hand corner here. He'll play the cue ball over to that area, right, this area right in here, uh, to play the two down in the corner. You, you know, notice how he moves down to check out the angle and set up that next right, shot. Right. He wants to. He wants to be certain of what he's doing. And see, you have to take into consideration too. Danny broke and ran out. Now Nick broke and didn't make anything on the break. Now if Danny happens to run out, it's his break again. There's a lot of variables that come into it with the rotate the break format. Certainly a double advantage here if he can get out to get the break. Use it nicely for the two. He'll have to come back up for the three ball. Right, he'll play the three in the side. I don't see any problems here. The only problem I could maybe see here would be the four to the five, but I don't think he'd have a problem with that. I think he'd just come right around on them. He really didn't come down as far as he wanted to. He has to let the cue ball move on him now. He can't just stop right there. He has to be careful of the four. He'll want to try to go down table. He's got to play the four in this corner pocket here. This semifinal is tied at one. It's a race to nine. Oh, Good job. job. Without touching another ball, he comes right back up for the four. Right, he come to play. Now what is he trying to do here, buddy? Uh, he's just going to play the four ball straight in, uh, hit the in rail, and come out for position on the five. He wants to get pretty close to straight in on the five if he possibly can. Uh, here he's using the extension for his cue. He wants to make his cue a little longer so he can reach this shot. We have the, what we call the stretch bridge, and then the extension that actually goes on your cue to make your cue longer. 
and you can hold your cue more in a professional manner than you can with just a standard bridge. So he'll just play this in and come down to the end rail and back out. I think he thought originally for a moment about maybe trying to make the shot left-handed, but then decided to make the change. Right. He can approach the shot more like he was right down on it with a, the extension like that. Again, brings it out beautifully for the five ball. I think sometimes players maybe get in too big a hurry to make the right decision for the right kind of shot. You've got to take your time and make sure. You, sur you certainly do. I don't see this boy uh, doing that very often. He's uh, pretty methodical. I mean, he, he's got a good level head on his shoulder, and he plays really well. Trying to get position for the six as Nick Varner looks on. He had the break in this game, but did not make a ball on the break. The six is taken care of. All right, he'll just play the seven in, try to stay just a little high on the eight so he can hit the in rail and go back up for the nine. Stay above it just a little bit. He's perfect. He has a, a couple of options here. He could hit the rail and go one rail straight up, or he could go two rails out of the corner. It's just a question of preference. He is yet to miss, and you'll see him bring that cue ball down in great shape for the nine ball. And it was at this point that this young man really started to take control of this match. All right. Remember, by making that, he has the break for game four, and he's up two games to one. We're in the first of our semifinal matches in the Players' Championship here at Valley Forge, and following the break, we pick it up here in game four. And once again, this young man continues, buddy, to play very well. well he's not missing any balls. He's just breaking and running out. Here, he just wants to make sure that uh, he has a nice shot at the nine. He'll probably just draw this back one rail across. Uh, his, his stroke is long and smooth. He's uh, he come to play. And that shot wound up his second break and run of the match, giving him a 3-1 lead over Varner. So Nick Varner then got a chance to get a break. And remember when he missed earlier when he had the break, this time he did not miss. He kept the table. We're in game five. And Varner trying to battle his way back. Look out. Oh, I think he hooked himself. I think he's hooked. I believe he's hooked on the eight. He needed to move it past the nine and couldn't do it. Yeah, I believe he's frozen to the nine ball. A tough break, and he knows it. All you can do here, if you're, if you're hooked, all you can do is kick into the eight and kick hard and try to get lucky. At this point, Varner was down three games to one, and this was almost a must shot for him in this race tonight. It will not get there. No. So that was a big break in game number five for Danny Harriman. Yeah. He just shoot the eight in, come up the table there for the nine. Uh, it's going to give Danny a four to one lead. He's going to be hard to catch here playing rotate the break from this point. Harriman refusing to miss. Deep breath to calm those nerves as he tries to put away game five and take a commanding 4-1 lead. He does. <laughs> that was in game number five. That gave Nick Varner's opponent, Danny Harriman, the break for game six. Recall, each time he'd had the break in his first two opportunities, he was able to break and run. And the second game, Nick broke the balls and didn't make anything, and Harriman ran out. So he's, he's actually ran out from the one three times. And that's exactly what continued to happen as we move deeper into game number six. He's frozen to this ball. He's allowed to shoot toward the ball. He's going to throw this one in. He, as long as he elevates his cue and, and plays at an angle off of the ball, this is, this is a legal shot. He'll just throw the seven in, play position on the eight. Great shot. 
and he was working on his third consecutive break and run. This time he's going to make the long reach, or is he? Uh, I believe he'll end up, well, he may shoot it. I guess he is. It was not a tough shot, obviously. All he had to do was leave the cue ball there. So again, a break and run and a commanding 5-1 lead for Harriman. He has definitely taken charge of this match. He refuses to lose at this point. Let's look again. There you go. He shoots up table a little bit, throwing the seven toward the hole. And even though he had to come back with the left hand, he finished out the game and takes a commanding 5-1 lead. Welcome back once again to the Sheridan Hotel and Convention Center in Valley Forge, the Players' Championship, along with the rifleman Buddy Hall. I'm John Sanders, and we showed you what happened as the middle push came from Danny Harriman, and here in game number seven, once again, Nick Varner had the chance to break and try to get something started. You go back to that second, excuse me, third game, when Varner did not make any. Look at that break. He's extending, isn't he? Trying to get all the power that he can. He's got to keep making balls, especially when he has the break in this alternate break format. Yes, he does. He has a very thin shot on the one here. He'll probably try to spin this in, bring the cue ball two rails out of the corner and play in position on the two. He has to have an angle to go from the two to the three. So he'll probably hit this nice and soft. Bring the two rails out. He needs to stop below it. And he did. He settles it. This thing started out so well for Nick Varner when he broke and got the quick nine ball combination to take game one. But since then, it's been all Harriman. And looking back at this game number seven, this almost a must game for him right. on his break. Right, Nicky done something right there that's very uncharacteristic. He addressed the cue ball low and then he raised the cue tip up and went ahead and hit it with a high ball. So he was really unsure and went ahead and shot without raising up. So that's, uh, that's not a good sign. Well, now he has some work to do Come to get that cue ball down. There. I don't see any problems. I don't see any problems at all with this rack. He just draw the cue ball back, play the five in the other pocket. That's very uncharacteristic of Nick, not to, not to go ahead and get up off the ball, go ahead and shoot without making a firm decision. Those are the kind of indecision or indecisive moments that can cost you a match. It can cost you the game and match. You're exactly right. Varner down five games to one here in game seven. The seven is off the table. He Two didn't rails. move it, did he? No. Left it right there, yeah. which to me I think is a little tougher shot, don't you think? It is. He has to cut the ball back to his right side. Uh, I would have played two rails out of the corner there. Now he plays two rails to get himself in shape for the nine ball. All right. The nine's sitting right in front of the hole, so there's not much problem there. And that was a very important break and run for Varner just his second game of this match. Still down five games to two as we move onward to game eight. And in game eight, of course, the break went back to Danny Harriman. And this is the way the table laid out for Harriman. This makes the fourth rack that Danny has broke and run out if he gets out here. That's still a big if. Yes. I believe he's playing the combination here. The three, I mean the six, nine, eight. You're right. Now he wants to be careful not to get behind the nine. I believe he's okay. Now what does he do with the six? Well, uh, you, you can either play it in the corner or in the side. I like going up and down and playing the ball in the side. Uh, Danny may elect to just go one rail straight up, play the nine ball, the seven ball down in the corner and just float down for the nine. I like playing it in the closest hole. He has been almost unstoppable in this semifinal. And this is game eight. Okay. Oh, it 
does not fall. This might have opened the door for Varna to jump back in the match. Oh, that was a big ball there. That would have just about put it out of reach. You see the cut just a little bit too much. And it worked both sides of that pocket but would not fall. Right. That's the first mistake he has made in this match. Now, can Varner capitalize? Yeah, I know Nick will play the seven in the side. He'll play the three and six ball in this corner and play the seven ball over in the side right beside him and come out for the nine. Okay, he's played it a little deep. He'll still shoot the seven in the side. Varner trying to pull himself back in. This is some of what I was alluding to uh, when we talked about a young, new player going against an experienced player. Right. He has two spots to land here. Either uh, He can play this either way. Uh, he elected to go up in the corner and come across. You have to have a lot of confidence to shoot that shot. That's that He's telling on himself there. That tells you that he's playing really good pool. And that mistake helped him come back a bit. Varner winning game eight. Now trails by just two at 5-3. And in contrast to the other opportunities, as we look once again at how he set up that nine ball, that gives Varner the break when we come back for game number nine. He's trying to claw his way back in this semifinal match. Stay with us more. He could have gotten lucky there. It, he, he almost uh, made it off of the cue ball in the corner pocket there. But Danny's Varner knew how important that shot was because he's going to turn the table back over to someone who's made very, very few mistakes, only <laughs> one really in the match. Right. He's uh, missed one ball, and uh, believe me, that was an accident. That's very uncharacteristic. Uh, he, had he uh, the opportunity to shoot that shot over, I know he would have taken just a little more time on it. He'll just come up the rail here, I believe. Watch out. Yeah, he passed it. <laughs> he got by. And as we move later into that game, there's the eight and a chance once again to take a commanding lead up five games to three in the match. It's a race to nine, remember. And the winner moves to the final of the Players' Championship. Danny Harriman is playing like anything but a nervous young player on tour. A little smile of confidence because he has moved ahead six to three over Nick Varner, the veteran here in Valley Forge. Right, Danny's having a really good time. He's on TV, he's smiling for the cameras, he really loves it. And we move on now to game number 10. He has the big advantage and he has the break. Man, he broke those balls hard. He come up dry. Did not make any. He left the eight ball spinning, but let's see what Nick Varner can do. Watch the break again. He cracked them. Well done on the one. Right, he'll, he'll play the two-seven combination here. And leaving the two in front of the hole, so he'll be able to move from the two to the four, I mean two to the three. He'll, he'll just hit one rail and come out just a, above the top of the nine here. He's going around looking at it now. That's where he wants to be in that area right there. So he made sure he got down there. He overhit it. He'd rather hit it a little too hard than not hard enough. Well, you can make up for going a little too far there. If you don't get out, you can't. Right, if you stop behind the nine, you're in trouble. Brings it back once again for the four. You'll look right at that. Here you have a couple options. You could play to this side of the five or to the other side. I believe that the, he'll play the four ball in this corner, drawing the cue ball back up to this area right here. Okay, he used the side rail, but he's he may elect to play the six ball 
down in the opposite corner from here. I don't know if he'll try to go to it or he may even elect to go into it. See, he's going into it. So does he take it all the way down to the corner or does he put it in the side? I would believe that he'll take it down in the corner and just stop his cue ball somewhere around the area that the six ball is in right now. He's over, he's looking at that shot. He'll he'll just do that and then probably play the cue ball two rails out of the corner when he shoots the eight. And then the nine as he continues to try to battle back. Oh, he drew it back. Well, he's well, in great shape for the eight. Right. He'll just play the cue ball either, either straight down table or to the side rail and out. He pulled it back so he'd have just a natural swing at the ball. He's elevating his cue, so he's just going to pull it straight down table, play the nine ball in the opposite corner, like so. Well done. Barner trying to scramble back here in game number 10, down six games to three in this race to nine. Now 6-4. Barner got a chance when, for one of the few times in this match, Harriman did not make a ball on the break. So right now, Barner is back in it. I'm John Sanders, along with the rifleman, Buddy Hall. It has been an uphill battle for Nick Barner since game two, hasn't it? Yes, yes it has. Come up dry. And that's what began to turn this match around in game two. Excuse me, game three. Because we've had five breaks and runs so far, and it seems like every time a player doesn't make a ball on the break, the other guy jumps right in there. <laughs> the other guy runs out. So the alternate break has not really been in the favor of either player in this match. Right. He has a problem here with the 4-9. Uh, he's going to have to figure out something to do with this ball. I don't know if it'll pass or, or not, but that's a definite problem. It's going to put him in a position to where he can only go to one side or the other or have to go into that ball. And he has to think about that four shots down the road from right here. So he'll play a nice angle to get on the three where he can come at least two rails at the four, I would think. Leading 6-4, race to nine. Okay, I believe he's played it to an angle where he can just go one rail across or go straight up table. It's really here a preference. And he's thinking about it. That's the problem, isn't it, That's right in that area? This is the problem. He has to really consider these two balls. And again, I think this is a critical game in this match, especially for Nick Varner. This is the way I would play this shot. I don't know if Danny will play, that, play it like that or not, but this is the way I would play it. I would go two rails out and go to the back of the three. He's coming one rail across. See, the four may pass. If the four passes, then, uh, then he's okay. He just come two rails down. He's had a definite, he's definitely trying to make a plan here. Well, this might be the key shot in this game. Can he get back? Will he have room? A shot at the four. He's played it like the four will go. He, Boy, it doesn't look like it from our angle, does it? No, <laughs> but he's played position like the four ball will go by. We're about to find out. Ah, goes right by. There ah. you go. He knew what he was doing. Harriman very much in control of this match now. No problems here. He'd just shoot the six in, float over, and play the seven in the side. Oh, it's a nice shot. He well, just cut it in touch, nice isn't and it? soft. Wow. <laughs> just uh, a terrific shot. And that's how you reach the final round, even though you've only been playing on the Pro Tour for a few months. And being unranked. First he, time he played was at the Bicycle Club, the Invitational in Los Angeles, in Bell Gardens, California, last December. Uh, 
he gave a lot of players headaches out there. Well, he has been a big, big headache here for Nick Varner. A chance to take a 7-4 lead if he can put away the nine. And that's what he's done. An excellent job by Danny Harriman. He takes a 7-4 lead at Valley Forge. We'll be back. As we come back to Valley Forge, the Sheridan Hotel Convention Center gets set for game number 12, a 7-4 lead and a big break for Danny Harriman. He can really take this one by the throat if he can break and run. Again, a lot of movement. He leaves the whole floor when he breaks the ball. He does. <laughs> That's great if one goes. It's not Look, so it, great if the other guy gets the goes. table. He leaves the whole, watch his feet. <laughs> <laughs> is that follow through or is that follow through? That is follow through. <laughs> oh man, well, Look at how the shot. table sets up. <laughs> and he came up dry. He didn't make anything behind that. How can you hit him that hard and not make a ball on the break? Nick Varner now trying to set this table up, make his run, and still climb back in this semifinal match. He trails four games to seven. I couldn't tell if the one goes in there or not. He may like to play the cue ball right down behind him here. He may just duck. Oh, he's doing something else. Went the other oh. way. He did not like that too much. Uh, he has uh, under hit the shot a little bit. He wanted to hit that ball a little harder. He wanted to come on across the top of it. He's ended up too close to the two ball. Now it makes it uh, pretty difficult to see a line from the ball to the pocket. So he may elect to just uh, uh, play safe here. I believe he's uh, trying to duck. Or he may be trying to whack it over in the corner. Yep, he did. Nice shot. Great shot. Nick Varner trying to scratch his way back. Oh, I thought he would go across. He came all the way down. He may have ended up a little too straight on the four. That's why I like to go in a straight across. That way he would have had an angle to come out. And you can use uh, the rail as well to help you on the shot. Right. But just like that, he ends that problem. Well, that's professional for you. That's when, when you know, really know how to play. Uh, you can overcome simple little stuff like that. Looked like he straight in. He had enough angle to come all the way up table. It looks like he's playing for the combination. Might be. What do you think? Well, I believe he's going to, uh, this, this is really a hard shot. Uh, the nine's setting about a foot from the pocket, eight, eight, eight to ten inches from the pocket. He has to cut the six into the nine. If he makes this, he will deserve it. Uh, it's, it's not an easy shot. Six, nine combo, no. Well, he took a gamble. He had that combo early, but that was a much easier one, the two nine combo in the opening game. Right. Right, a lot of difference when the ball's right next to it. So he's halfway across the table from the nine here with the six. So that, that's a much harder combination. You have to be more exact with it. And you know that Nick will second guess his decision a little bit now. But he's trying to jump back in it, trying to make something happen. You know, he's been playing from behind from the third game on. Right. He just played this in, come one rail out here. Play the seven up in the corner. He wants him a nice little angle where he can come back on the eight ball. I sometimes use the second rail on this shot. Okay, he's using the second rail. Now, if there's a plus for Nick, it is that he will have the break in game 13. Even if Airman gets out in this game. Okay, he'll play this in, play the cue ball one rail across. Playing the eight ball and the nine ball, probably both in the same pocket. Okay, he wants a shot to where he can play them both in the same pocket. He if has done just that. Depending on where he landed, if if he's too straight, you just go forward and play it in the opposite corner. But I think he wants to, 
play them both in the same hole. He's very cool, no perspiration, not breaking a sweat, just going about his business in a very matter-of-fact way, building up an 8-4 lead. He's just loving it. Just one game away. He's loving it. He's on TV. 8-4. <laughs> Harriman in control, tries to wrap it up when we come back. Welcome back to the Players' Championship here on Prime. You're looking at a young man trying to advance to the final. Danny Harriman has things his way. It's 8-4. This is critical, though, for Nick Varner. He has the break, and he desperately needs maybe a nine ball, a quick combo, or at least a break and run. Uh, the only, right, but the only problem with this is if he breaks and runs out, now it's Danny's break. That's a good point, and Danny's been very good off the break. Look here, the nine going up toward the corner. Ooh. He's come up dry. Nothing fell on the break. I don't believe the one will pass uh, the two ball up here, though. I don't, I don't believe Danny has a shot. He'll probably have to play safe. And Nick out of his shoes as well, <laughs> trying to will those balls in the pocket. Trying to get something to go, just anything. I believe Danny will probably play this two rails out of, he'll play this two rails here and play the cue ball over against the side rail using the three and the eight as blockers there. I believe that's the way he'll play this. Or he'll come straight across. Okay, he like to come straight across. He's using those for blockers. Perfect shot. And he has left a mess for Nick Varner. Now Nick, the veteran, is going to try to come up with something, something to turn this table in his favor. Right. Nicky, what Nicky has to do here is try to get lucky. I asked a friend of mine once, I said, if you're trying to get lucky, you blast and you're trying to get lucky and you do get lucky. Did you make a good shot or did you get lucky? <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, I guess after thought, thinking about it, I had to make a good shot. He's going to try to jump it, right? Right, he's going to jump over it. Oh, he scratched. And that means ball in hand for Harriman. Well, it was a gutsy try, you have to it, say that. Yes, it was. Here, when you, when you jump over a ball like that, you have to hit the cue ball below the center. You have to give it a draw in action in order to get the cue ball to get up fast enough. So here, what happened when he jumped over him, he hit the one, then it took the draw action and actually curved just a little bit around the six ball and went into the corner pocket. And it just rattled before it fell, so he got a tough break all the way around. Yes, he did, that was really hard luck. But it certainly opens the door now for Danny Harriman to advance to the championship of this Players Championship in Valley Forge. We're at the Sheraton Hotel and Convention Center. I'm John Sanders along with Buddy Hall. You gonna draw it back here, Just Buddy? Just draw it straight back, uh, play the three ball in the side. He wants to try to get straight in on the three. He gets straight in or close to straight in. I believe that he'll have no problems. He wants to be able to come one rail out for the five ball. The four to the five is really the game ball here. He has to play position on the on the four to be able to get position on the five. He'll play to this area right here, maybe draw his cue ball straight back, or maybe just hit one rail and come over. Okay, he's moved to seven. Now he'll just come one rail, that's perfect. That's perfectly done. He'll shoot the four ball in, come up about where the cue ball's at right now, play the five in this corner, and I don't see any problems from there on out. It looks like he's gonna advance. He almost got the seven as well on that particular shot. Yeah, that would Set up for the five. Yeah, that would have been an added bonus, wouldn't it? It sure <laughs> would, because the six and the eight are right there together. The ball that he had, that he would have had to play position on. But I don't see any problems here. All he's got to do is make sure that he doesn't get careless. And you have to admire the fact that he's walking around, taking his time. He's thinking like you: don't get careless, don't make a silly mistake here. Right. I don't want to beat myself. If I get beat, I sure don't want to beat myself. That's what he's thinking right now. He has been so cool throughout. Young man from Springfield, Missouri. He wants to be careful not to foul the... See, they're playing foul on all balls. He was really close to the nine then with his elbow. Whoa, he says. Whoa. <laughs> Stay right there. Perfectly done. He'll want to keep a nice little angle. He won't go all the way down here. He'll want to stay up he, a, a high on the ball so he can just go to the end rail and back out. He doesn't want to get straight in on the eight. I think that's a good point, especially for amateur players. You're much better with some kind of an angle than a straight in shot because it, uh, you know, it adds to your options after right. the cue ball hits the ball. 
Right. All that remains is the nine. And he is going to get down far enough to get the angle. This to win this semifinal. The youngster over the veteran, but boy, what a match Danny Harriman has played here today. A chance to move into the final round against either Mike Siegel or Jimmy Wetch. Hats off to Danny Harriman. What a great match he played. Some tough luck in that game for Nick Barner, but every time he had the chance, that young man came through. He sure did. He played great. If uh, this is some kind of uh, an example of what it's going to be like in the finals, uh, uh, whoever he plays is going to have a hard time. Doesn't look like it's his first time on TV or in the semifinal or final of a major event, but it is. They've loved it here at Valley Forge. One of our semifinalists is set, and you can't discount this man's chances. He played so well. Oh, he played great. But this might have been the key shot as far as the it comeback hopes were concerned. actually curved around it. Yeah. Actually curved around the six. And with that, that was just about it for Nick Varner. Harriman was able to get out. He goes on to win this semifinal of the Players' Championship nine games to four. Stay with us. We'll have more coming up from Valley Forge right after this. The key, games two, four, and six. Danny Harriman was able to break and run out. He wins at 9-4 here in Valley Forge. Standing by now with Buddy Hall. Buddy? Danny, what do you think of your win here? You played a great player. You beat Nick Varner, one of the giants on the tour for a little bit. What do you think? Well, uh, I was a little bit nervous about the lights, and I was hoping that wouldn't bother me and all the camera. I've never played in front of camera lights, but I, uh, it didn't bother me, and I'm, I've beat Nick before, and I think I can play with these people the pros I think I can play with them and I'm glad that I'm playing on the pro tour and uh, Tom's Q sticks is sponsoring me so. okay well I think you can play on the pro tour too if you smile a little bit we'll know you're having fun when could you see the finish line uh, I don't know I I take it a game at a time I don't know when I saw the finish line I think when I saw the nine and I had position on the nine and it was eight to four I think that was the finish line so was the finish line for this match, that's for sure. Harriman advances to the final in his first major event on the Pro Billiards Tour, awaiting the winner of the other semifinal match between Mike Siegel and Jimmy Welch. Meanwhile, it is Harriman, 9-4 over Varner. We hope... Coming up, former world champion Mike Siegel, one of the most recognizable players in the world, will try to continue his run in the Players' Championship. Siegel is a Hall of Famer who has been without a win for more than a year on the Pro Billiards Tour. He is currently ranked number three. His opponent is unranked, Jimmy Wetch of Bloomington, Minnesota. He has shocked the tour by reaching the semifinal round in just his third professional tournament. Wetch used sound fundamental play to advance against favored opponents and stands just one step away from a shot at a major championship. From the Sheridan Hotel and Convention Center in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, it's semifinal number two of the 1994 Players' Championship on the Pro Billiards Tour. Welcome to Valley Forge. I'm John Sanders along with the Rifleman, Buddy Hall. We get set for semifinal number two, and we have a new face, the second one on the scene in this major event early in 1994, in Jimmy Wetch. Uh, Jimmy Wetch, another young, great player. Uh, he hasn't played in too many events, but the ones that he plays in, he's formidable. He's a hard man to beat. He's deliberate. Uh, he's going to be hard to beat. Talk about deliberate style. The guy he's going against has that same style. The veteran playing here, Mike Siegel. Um, Mike, uh, Mike has a deliberate style, but Mike, uh, along with that style, he makes no mistakes. He makes everything that he shoots at. He, call, he shoots all the right shots, uh, breaks the balls good. Mike, in my opinion, is the hardest man in America to beat. Now, I don't know how Jimmy's going to feel, but I know this about Mike. He takes nothing for granted, does he? Takes nothing for granted and gives his opponents all the respect in the world. Uh, he'll give him uh, all the respect in the world by playing him as hard as he can possibly play him all the way through the match. Semifinal from the Players' Championship in Valley Forge, it's Jimmy Wetch and Mike Siegel. We have all the action of the Pro Billiards Tour coming your way next. Welcome back to Valley Forge, set for the semifinal match of the Players' Championship on the Pro Billiards Tour here in Valley Forge. Here's the way we reach this point. Siegel and Wetch getting set. 
The winner will take on an outstanding young player, Danny Harriman, in the final. But first things first, the semifinal, and let's set the rules, buddy. Well, up to this point, we've played a race to nine, two out of three sets. When you get to the TV matches, it's a race to nine, one match. No shot clock, a foul on all balls, that's ball in hand. Alternate the break, push outs only after the break. The referee has the final decision. That means that he's the boss. And this guy has been the boss a lot. Mike Siegel set for the opening lag for the opening break with Jimmy Wetch. And a good start by Mike Siegel. He will have the first break. Siegel in the Hall of Fame. He almost made the one off the break. He made a ball. Yes, he did. What's the key to his game? Uh, Mike has just played, uh, he's just so knowledgeable of the game. He very seldom ever makes a mistake. Uh, here we have a two ball. Uh, he may elect to play a two six combination or he may try to come down three rails below it and play the two up in the corner. Mike is such a uh, dynamic player. That he just, he very seldom ever makes a mistake and he just runs out there. Knows when to play safe, when to go for the shot. Breaks the ball's good. He has a solid all-around game. And with the veteran against the newcomer, how good it would be for him if he can break and run out. He establishes his authority right away. Right. Now, he knows that, too. Mike is tough. He, he knows that the, the more pressure that he can apply right here, the better off he'll be. I don't see much of a problem here. It uh, looks like that uh, the five to the six, you get on the six, it's pretty well over. He wants to get straight in. Now he can just draw his cue ball straight back up table. He'll use the side reel a little bit. Play the seven ball in the side. He wants to get straight in on the seven so he uh, doesn't have to uh, do anything but just stop his ball. This is the route he'll take. One reel out. Opening game of this semifinal, Mike Siegel has won just about everything imaginable in his days. Certainly, oh. along with you, buddy, he's one of the more recognizable players on the tour right now. He's done a lot of work with instructional videos and those kinds of things. Mike uh, has won a hundred uh, tournaments that professionals have played in. Uh, you can call them pro tournaments. He's won 38 major titles. So, uh, yes, he's been here a long time and one of the greatest all-time players that uh, ever played the game. And that's a rare, rare mistake. Yes, it is. And he'll talk to himself about that. It shocked him more than anybody there. <laughs> he, does, he just, he failed to cut it. He hit it just like it laid. It caught the rail going into the pocket, and it was hit hard enough that it just jawed out. There was no forgiveness down there, and you'll see him during the course of this match. He'll talk to himself or anyone else around him a lot. Now a chance for Jimmy Wetch. Well, this is a good break in the opening game for him. Let's see if he can capitalize. Jimmy's a pretty solid little player. He'll, he usually gets out when he's supposed to, and uh, sometimes when he isn't supposed to, he'll get out. Uh, uh, you're a little surprised. He takes game one thanks to a mistake by Mike Siegel. But here's a young man playing in only his third tournament, and he takes game one. We'll have more when we come back to Valley. It is Jimmy Wetch leading one game to zero in this race to nine. The break going on the alternate break to Wetch, and this gives him a real opportunity. Looks like he can take a 2-0 lead here. Uh, Everything is laying where all he has to do is work his elbows. Really strong on the break. Young man from Bloomington, Minnesota. He owns Crown Billiards in Bloomington. And in this game, as he got himself in good shape off the break, trying to break and run out, and immediately establish maybe a little bit of his own personality in this match. Right. He wants to uh, establish himself as, uh, as 
definitely a threat to Mike. He knows that Mike is one of the toughest people in the world to beat. And uh, the farther ahead that he can get right now, the better off he's going to be, and he knows that. Uh, he'll probably try to play a little above the eight ball there so he can come straight down table for, I would say, probably for the six-nine combination. It looks like he's just going to go straight across instead of down. Okay. He's gotten the angle he's looking for. Maybe he went a little too far. He may have went a little too far. Yeah, he would love to get back for this combo, wouldn't he? Right. They try to kill his ball here a little bit. When I say kill his ball, they hit the cue ball on the bottom and give it a reverse action. A little to the left to make it go a longer distance. And he'll kind of just throw this ball in like so. There it is. He has it set up for the possible 6-9 combo that would give him a two-game lead. This is really a tough shot here. You have the six ball on the rail. You have the nine ball off the rail. Uh, whether he can get in there enough or not to cut the nine, this is a really a hard shot. It's not a, a high percentage make shot. But he's going to try it. Yep. He got it. And the six-nine combination. A great job by Wetch as he breaks and runs out. And goes up 2-0. So you can see here how much he has to cut the ball. He cut it almost toward the diamond up there and still um, just barely made the nine ball. The nine hit wide in the pocket. And that gave him a 2-0 lead in this semifinal. Gave him a little bit of control, but remember the break in game three then went back to Mike Siegel. And here's the way the table looks as we pick up in game three. Okay, Michael will play this ball in. He'll probably just bump the eight and stay right there. I don't believe that he'll try to draw the cue ball off of the eight. I think that he'll probably just try to stay right there, just shoot it in soft. Well, let's just make them both. Well, How's that? I don't believe he wanted to do that <laughs> because it leaves him a, a hard angle to get back to the nine. He has to, he has to come with a really nice shot here. But Mike's one of the greatest shot makers in the world anyway. He didn't hesitate in looking at this eight. Right, he has to draw it over to the side rail and back down below the side pocket. So he has to really hit this shot good. He, he, he Boy, did what a good. shot. What a shot. He doesn't look worried about being down two games to none because he's no longer in that position. Yeah, he's not gonna come along peaceably. He's gonna, he's gonna go ahead and, and fight a battle. Well, this, as we look back to the replay, it was quite a shot. It made the next one tougher, but as it, but as it turned out, it didn't really bother him at all. He takes a two-to-one lead, Jimmy Wetch leading Siegel, but Siegel getting on the board, and as we move on now to game four, Wetch had the break but could not run out. He ran down to the five and missed it. That was an uncharacteristic miss of uh, Jimmy. I know Mitch, Jimmy really well. And this, of course, gave Siegel the opportunity he had been looking for to even the match at 2-2. It's obvious that if you don't break and run out, you could be in trouble. It's 2-2 in this semifinal. Stay with us. As we come back, it is 2-2 in this semifinal between Siegel and Wetch. And we are picking it up now in game five. Look at the shot by Mike Siegel. That was really a high percentage shot that Mike shot at then. He banked the three ball one rail down table, but if you'll notice, had he missed that ball, he's got the four, five, and the eight down there as kind of a wall between him and the object balls. In case he would have missed it, he might have gotten safe. That set up him being able to break and run out and regain some control in the match at three games to two. That was game five. Now we pick it up in game six. And this was the attempt to break and run out for Wetch. That's a nice shot. That's really a pretty shot when it's executed properly. You come around four rails nicely for the nine ball. He had this to even the match. And just like that, he breaks and runs out. It is 3-3 here in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. We're at the Sheraton Hotel and Convention Center. Getting ready for game number seven of this semifinal of the Players' Championship, one of the majors. And the break. Oh, good one by Siegel. 
He's made two balls made so two? far. Yeah, he might make three. He made two balls. The two is... Uh, Okay, he's got a nice shot at the two into the three. He'll try to keep the two right in front of the pocket. Now the four's along the side rail up there. He wants to get straight in on the four. Uh, so all he'll have to do is, that's all he wants to do. He wants to come straight over here, get straight in on the four, where all he'll have to do is just draw his cue ball straight back for position. He wants to get straight in on the five now, and then he'll just have to stop his cue ball a couple times to get out. He wants to be straight in. He's overshot it a little bit. Could be a problem. He's overshot it a little bit. Uh, okay, he's okay. Now he'll just play the cue ball two rails around the nine, the end rail into the side rail, and back out for the eight ball in the upper corner. One, two, eight ball. He'll either play the same shot here, two rails around for the nine, or one rail straight down. Just whichever he prefers. It's, it's a preference. Okay, he played it two rails. Siegel trying to come right back, get his third break and run out if he can make the nine ball. He does. Mike Siegel breaks and runs out and he goes back on top four games to three that was after game number seven Siegel was back on top and the alternate break and we move now to game eight What's this? Oh. this is an incredible effort that just misses you heard <laughs> he, Mike say watch this right what he what he tried to do then actually was roll the nine ball he actually hit the eight ball too full double kissed it and almost made the eight across the corner right here he's trying to roll a nine he double kissed the cue ball with the eight and the eight ball almost went across the corner he was actually trying to roll the nine on that shot trying to get lucky Wetch had the break to start this game eight, and I think he's lucky to get the table back. He can get out here and get even again. This has been a good, tight match so far. Yes, it has. He does. It is 4-4. Remember, it's a race to nine. Stay with us. Back like Mike Siegel, set to break in game nine. We're tied at four. Three times he has been able to break and run out, and uh, he is at the table in good shape to try to do it again. He has found the place to break from. He's making two balls every time he breaks. Check the extension here. The one ball goes straight in the side. The corner ball goes one rail straight back down here in the corner. I mean, the end, roll, end ball. That's a great break right there. Nothing's touching. Everything's laying wide open. If he can just whack this one in, if he can make this shot, that's pretty much making the nine ball provided he doesn't hit the eight and get hooked or something. That's... Doesn't touch the eight. He didn't touch the eight. I don't see any problems here. All he's got to do is make, uh, just make sure he plays error free. He would like to have been straighter in on this, I believe. There's the five. He size up what remains. He may play the cue ball straight over and play the six in the opposite side. Uh, I, it's hard to tell the angle here, but he may go straight over and play the six in the side. That's what he was trying to do, but he didn't get underneath it. He ran right into it. Now it becomes a much more difficult shot. Well, he's jumped down here like he's just going to bank this ball. I don't think he'll do that. I believe he'll play safe. He done the unforgivable sin here. He didn't get out when he was supposed to. Or, well, he's still shooting. He may still get out. No, nope. he didn't get out, but it looks like he played lucky. Perfect. Just yeah. the way he planned it, of course, <laughs> as he shakes his head walking away. He made a mistake in game one, and Wetch made him play and won that game. Since then, he had been perfect, but uh, a mistake here. 
Mike found him a designated ear man over there. He just <laughs> explained what happened. He loves to do that. <laughs> Jimmy's going to try to jump over this. He'll try to hit it really square if he can. He's pretty lucky. Uh, no, he's not lucky. I thought he was going to get lucky, but evidently he didn't. Mike's got a shot here where he just shoot it straight in, follow up just a little bit. See, both balls, are, it has kind of a dead action on it when you jump the ball like that. You're having to hit it with a reverse cue ball. And Mike Siegel is back in control here in this game, number nine. He just popped the cue ball off the rail a little bit, I believe, played the nine ball down the corner. He almost missed the eight. <laughs> <laughs> he was thinking about it, wasn't he? Yeah. And that gives him a 5-4 lead. Siegel survived a mistake in game nine, and he's explaining it to everybody. Game nine. After nine games, the score is Siegel five. And by making that shot, he kind of set the table up for himself. Took a five games to four lead. We move on to game 10, and the break belongs to Jimmy Wetch, unranked. Yeah. He used Jimmy for an ear man for just a second there. <laughs> <laughs> he used his opponent. Well, you've seen Mike enough times to know he <laughs> loves to talk and explain yes, everything. Yes, he does. It's kind of like he's looking for confirmation, isn't it? Yeah. Strong break. Yeah, the once found the side. They've they figured out how to make the one ball. Uh, he's got the two ball over here in this corner. Just I think he just draw the cue ball over and play the three in the side. I don't believe he'll try to get it back above it. I believe he'll just go to the side rail and out, play the two ball, the three ball in the side. That's what he's doing. Now he just wants to stay in line here. He's he's got the same uh, option that Mike Siegel had. Uh, just don't make any mistakes. He goes to the rail, back out. He wants to really get straight in on this ball, maybe just a hair off center. He'll draw the cue ball back a little bit, play the five in the corner. He just doesn't want to make any mistakes. And this is a point where, with this match so close, it's at 5-4, you really can't afford to speed yourself up and make a mistake, as you do, and it could be costly. Uh, yeah, it could cost you the, at this stage of the game right here, it could not only cost you the game, but it could cost you the match and the whole tournament. Exactly right. Knowing that Mike Siegel would have the break on the next game. And that certainly had to be going through his mind at this point as he tried to go through the balls one at a time and not get too far ahead. Well, I believe Jimmy has uh, really uh, broken the balls and it looks like he's going to run all the way out from the break. It's just a question of uh, getting uh, in line and staying in line. By staying in line, I mean make sure he has the proper angle on the eight to get back to the nine. Isn't it surprising, though, buddy, that in only his second or third event that he could go this deep into a professional tournament? Well, Jimmy's been playing pool a long time. He just hasn't been playing on the professional tour a long time. But uh, Jimmy's a, a formidable opponent. He's a good player. All that remains to complete the break and run out here in game 10 is the nine ball. And this to tie it up once again. He does. At that point, it was 5-5. And Jimmy Retch with the break and run out had gotten even with Mike Siegel. The next break going back to Mike Siegel. And as we come in here on game 11, Siegel trying to make something happen. I don't know if the three ball passes the seven. If the three ball will go underneath the seven, then he'll just play the two ball in the corner, bring the cue ball all the way over to the side rail. Mike had been so successful with the break and run out in his previous four break opportunities, but it is Jimmy Wetch now moving up six games to five and his turn to break. Wow. The table's leaking. He made two balls on the break. They're both starting to make two balls every time they break. He's hooked himself here. He'll have to push out. He's really laying into him. 
the cue ball is launched. It, you can it see it. It is launched. It didn't. I don't think it touched any green at all, did it? Right. It didn't come down until it hit the one. He's elected to push out. And remember, according to the rules now, you have just that one push out. Then the uh, option goes to Mike Siegel. Right. Mike can take this shot or he can pass it. Uh, if there's anything that he can do with it, he will take the shot. He won't. Uh, he won't give it back to Jimmy. If he's got any way to control the game from here himself, he'll take it. Okay, he's trying to stick him behind the six, which he has done rather well. Yes, sir, indeed. He has done it very well. Remember, any fouls are ball in hand, and in a match this tight, uh, one mistake like that, a foul could be costly, could be fatal. Yes, it could. He's got Jimmy in really a spot here. Jimmy will probably break out his jump cue. Uh, this ball is almost straight in. If he can get over the six, he's trying to play this ball straight in now. This is, oops, nope. he hit the six. He hit the six, and that's exactly what I was talking about because the foul makes it ball in hand, and this could be the break that Siegel's looking for. Yes, it could. Tell you give any good player. It was so close. He just couldn't oh, quite. Just, Not enough room to clear the six. Just barely nipped it, didn't he? You give any good player ball in hand, and <laughs> that's trouble. One year we were keeping up with it in a tournament. Mike got the cue ball in hand 18 times during this particular tournament. He ran out 18 times. Well, if he can do it here, if he can run out, he will. Tie the match. It's a race to nine, and this one has just stayed on even course throughout. The biggest lead has been a two-game lead for Wetch. Right, he has a, a touchy little shot here. This uh, this shot, uh, uh, I don't. Uh, he's going to cut it back over his over his left shoulder. It looks like. I believe he. He's going to cut it over with a low right hand cue ball. Just draw the cue ball straight to the rail and back out for the six. He's got to put a lot of English on this ball. He's popped it. See, now he's got another tough shot. Now this is not easy. Which side does he go? Well, he'll probably shoot the same shot that he shot that time. He'll go in the corner pocket, draw the cue ball over to the side rail and back out again. He, only this shot uh, lies a little better than the last shot. He'll probably just play this one rail across here instead of the two rail banger. You know, it, it's, he's hitting it one rail and just coming across on this one. Or he may even come around three rails. He may have that shot. Yeah, he's coming three rails. Well done. He's overhit this shot. It's going to put him over close to the rail for the seven ball. And he's got a down angle. He's below the seven. Okay. He was able to follow it to the rail and back out. He's okay. Well, what a nice out. That was a nice out there. And on several of these shots trying to get out here in this game, it has been a marginal shot that he's been able to complete. He does get out. He ties it up at 6-6. Six, six. The foul and the ball in hand, and Siegel back in it. We're tied at six. Welcome back to Valley Forge and Prime's coverage of the Players' Championship. I'm John Sanders, along with the rifleman, Buddy Hall. And by taking the ball in hand after the foul and being able to get out, wow. Wow, the table's there's leaking. Been, there's nothing left here. <laughs> what a job by Mike Siegel. It looks like he has a simple combination up in the corner. That might have been as good a break as we've seen in these semifinals. Yeah. He's got to get to that. Oh, he could draw it straight back. I thought he had to hit the side rail and come out. Well, he's not very happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, is he talking to Jimmy or a spectator? I'm not sure. He <laughs> might be talking to you. <laughs> uh, 
Well, he's chirping a little bit right now yeah. because he's made this tougher than he needed to. Right. I believe he'll kick the other way. I believe that he'll come back and go around table. If I were him, I would come around and kick the other way. Take a chance on uh, making maybe the combination. There's well, he made his decision and uh, <laughs> people clapping for him. He don't like that. <laughs> He's taking it the wrong way. <laughs> uh, that says a th that a pitcher is worth a thousand words. He's not happy he got behind that ball. I mean, he was a little hard luck to get behind the ball. Set okay, he'll shoot this one straight in, come two rails out of the corner here. This is a tough shot to make. Yeah, this is the area he wants to be in right here. So all he'll have to do is just stop his ball. This is a tough shot right here. This can make you or break you. You have to roll it the length of the table. He knocked it right in. Well done. Gives himself a little bit of an angle on the six. Now he wants to make sure he has an angle on the eight. He'll shoot this in, trying to maintain an angle on the eight where all he's got to do is just pop the rail and come back down table for the nine. We're tied at six. This is game 13. Semifinal number two of the 1994 Players Championship on the Pro Billiards Tour, and you're watching the Prime Network. This has been a great match. Yes, it has. I believe he just hit the rail, one rail here, and come right straight up table. Like so. Here it comes. In well beautiful executed. position for the nine. Well executed. 7-6, Jimmy Wetch is making it tough on the Hall of Famer Mike Siegel. A race to nine, and he has won a seventh game, 7-6. Seven, Jimmy Wetch, what a great job he's doing, and the plus for him is that in game 14, he had the break. Yeah, Jimmy says, look here, Mike, I'm here too. <laughs> he's one, it's, it's a dog fight. He's one to, he's one to hang right in there. Looks like that uh, he's made a ball on the break, but he's came up uh, hooked. I don't believe that he can make this shot. He may have to push out. If he can cut the ball in, he has a perfect angle to go right into the 2-9. He looks like he's shooting at it, so maybe he can hit it. Oh, he curved his ball. He curved his ball a little bit, sent the cue ball around the 2-9. He wanted to hit the 2-9. But, but he could not move them apart, so now he's got to do something off the rail, perhaps? Now he has to figure out a way to play safe, which is no bargain. This is really a tough situation to be in right here. Uh, maybe he just nip the two, or I, this is the way I would play it. Okay, he's shooting it across, bringing the cue ball up table. Well, he was hoping to get down in and get behind down there, the three, and. Yeah. The six, but he didn't get any help from those balls. See, I was thinking that the nine ball had a chance to go across the side, uh, but he elected not to do that. Uh, instead, he played the cue ball up the other end, which is a better shot than the one that I was looking at because the shot I was looking at, you have to get lucky. <laughs> if Mike can knock this in, uh, he can tie it up again. This is the key shot for him to get out. Solid. Yep. Mike's the type of guy, if he makes one tough shot, the next one's not going to be a tough <laughs> shot because he's going to play position off the first one. Well, this table sets up nicely for him now. He would like to be above the seven a little bit. He'd like to get high above the seven so he could have a down angle. He's perfect. He wants to play the seven in, come right over and play the eight in the same pocket. Like so. He'll just follow the cue ball straight down to the nine. It's game 14, Siegel trying to get out and get even. Boy, what a tight match. Siegel does it. 7-7 seven, seven here at Valley Forge at the Sheraton Hotel and Convention Center. And that one of the key shots that opened up the table for the veteran Mike Siegel. Yeah. 
We have a lot more to come. It's a race to nine, and our two players are tied at seven here on Prime. Well, we're right down to it here at Valley Forge. It's 7-7 in the Players' Championship semifinal. And Siegel continues to make at least one. He's made two. He's made three on a break. Yeah, I think he made four once, didn't he? <laughs> yes, there was he five balls left on the tables all. Look at that cue ball. It's launched into the air. Oh, what a nice break. He ended up with no shot here. Uh, he's either going to have to push out, which uh, is going to be hard to do because of the ball in the corner pocket. He's he may he may have a shot here to spin this ball in. He's going to have to do something. He can't push out because the ball's laying in the hole. Yes. OK, he's going to have to come with one more. Yep, at least one more. <laughs> There's a lot of balls between him and the target. Yeah, here's where he really wish he could use a jump cue. Uh, he what? hit it well. <laughs> well, there you go, hit and hope, huh? What? He says, <laughs> what? <laughs> well, that worked out beautifully, and he knows it. Don't think about it, just go on to the next shot. Yeah, now it's just a question of staying in line. It's. If he gets straight in on the five, all he has to do then is just shoot and stop. He got lucky here. He banked it one reel straight back. He was trying to play it straight in the hole. Like <laughs> he asked somebody if they liked that one. You know he <laughs> liked it. <laughs> He's been able to break and run out four times prior to this game. So this would be his fifth break and run out of the match. Right. He just shoot and stop. Follow the cue ball down for the nine. Only the second time in the match that he's had the lead. One game away from moving to the final of the Players' Championship is the veteran Mike Siegel. Siegel wins game Take a deep breath, Mike. <laughs> You're still in control here. You know, he missed the eight ball. Oops. He missed the eight ball the very first game. And he was behind one game, one game, one game, one game, all the way up to that point. And then he tied it up and then managed to take a one game lead. But the eight ball, missing the eight ball, the very first game caused him to be behind the whole set. He spent most of this match in the hole and now some work to be done by Jimmy Wetch. He just shoot this straight in, follow the cue ball down just a little bit for the three ball here in the corner. He wants to make sure he has an angle to come out for the four. Nice little shot here. It's, you have to be kind of cautious, cautious on this. You don't, don't want to hit it hard, but you don't want to roll it either. Okay. Don't hook yourself in the corner. Yeah, he's gotten straight in on the ball. He didn't want to go down that far. He got straight in on it. He's going to have to pick a long pocket. He doesn't want to do that, but he's going to have to go to one of the pockets at the other end. I would say this area right here, play the four ball down in the corner. He would really have rather have not gotten straight in on this ball. That's a pretty good shot, just getting the cue ball off the rail a little bit. It was a good shot. At least has a little bit of room. Uh, he's, he's moving a little too fast now. Uh, and he I may have shot he, too hard, too. Right. I thought he was moving a little too fast. He wasn't taking uh, the time that he really needed to take on that shot. And that could be fatal. The match is on the line now, and it's there to be taken if Mike Siegel can get out. So he jumped down and shot this ball really before he was ready to. He, he Mike, he's trying to play safe. He's giving him a piece of the ball. Mm -hmm. I would look to see if the five was dead here. Uh, the five, might, he might have a dead five ball if he kicked it to two. He's not even looking at it. He's just cutting the two. Oh, he's playing safe. That's okay. Uh, if he leaves Mikey a hit on the ball, though, he could be in trouble. The battle continues. Right. If, if he can hit this ball, he's liable to play the cue ball two rails around 
behind the two balls down here in this corner. Play the six ball one rail over behind the, I mean the two ball one rail over behind the six. Okay, he's playing it around. He was playing the cue ball behind the eight nine. The two just happened to get away from him. And it looks like he sold out. He was playing the cue ball behind the eight nine. But he couldn't get it to stay there. Now a chance for Wetch. This match is very much on the line in this game. Wetch must win. Siegel leads 8 7. <laughs> this is not an easy shot. <laughs> it sure isn't when the other man's got when the other man is on the hill. When oh, your opponent's my. on the hill. This is not an easy <laughs> shot. Look at this. He knows this is the shot. This is the one. Well done. <laughs> He's glad it's over. I would be too. <laughs> You'll notice he took a lot more time with that one than he did that miss earlier in this yeah, game. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. That was careless, the first game. And he's very fortunate to be able to come back to the table. It is 8-8 eight, eight and a race to nine. What a match this has been. We're in this. Well, this is what we came to see. It's 8-8 eight, eight between Siegel and Wetch. The veteran has been taken to the limit by the newcomer, and if there's one thing in Mike's favor, he's got the break for this deciding game, and he continues to break well. They made two balls. I'm curious to see Mike's style of play this time. I know that he's going to take his time and play like the old Mike Siegel right here. He's not going to take any chances. He's going to be sure about every shot before he hits it. Uh, he may elect to bank this first ball across the side. He may just stop right there unless the two passes the eight. If the two passes the eight, then he'll come on back like so. But well, if it I would, does. I would think it does. It looks to me like it does. He's looking at the bank now. He may elect to do that. He may elect just to stop. No, oh, he's coming back. No, he stopped. Now it's a question of getting on the three ball. The eight ball is a big ball here. You can get behind it if you're not careful. He moves the eight a little bit. Siegel trying to break and run out and win the match. That will put him in the final of the Players' Championship here in Valley Forge. But there's still some work to be done. I believe he'll play this ball right in. Just stop right there. If he's got an angle from there, he'll stop. He has to be able to get position on, on the seven. You can see that Buddy Hall is working his telestrator about three shots ahead on this particular <laughs> match. Yeah, and I'm not real sure that the seven goes by the nine. He may have to go in the other pocket. It looks like he's going to draw it straight back and play the seven in the opposite corner pocket. Oh, you want to be careful not to get behind the eight. Well, he's not going to get behind it, but he might be snug to it. <laughs> Got a little bit of a break there. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. It's just basic nine ball here. He just don't want to get careless now. He definitely got a little bit of a break. He brought that down too far, but he got away with it. Two shots away from moving to the final. The veteran, the Hall of Famer, Mike Siegel. Look at him. Whoa, at whoa, him. whoa. <laughs> I'm watching. No this. problem, huh? <laughs> no problem. That's for the match. <laughs> what a struggle it was. A great match between Jimmy Wetch and Mike Siegel. But Siegel comes through. He breaks, runs out by just a hair. When it's 8 8. When it's 8 8 like that and you break and run out, that's what you come to watch. Well, here's the one you were talking about. It just kept coming and coming and coming and got enough of the eight that he was still alive. All right. All right. Congratulations to Mike Siegel. He has reached the
final of the Players' Championship just by one game over. Wetch, 9-8. It went right down to the final game. Mike Siegel wins it, 9-8 over Jimmy Wetch. He's standing by now with Buddy Hall. Buddy? Well, Mike, here we are. Uh, usually you holding the mic, asking me the questions. This time it's my turn to hold the mic and ask you the questions. Yeah, uh, what do you think of these youngsters? Well, the kids, I saw this kid play in June in a tournament. He's only played in one so far, and I was telling Nick Varner and some other uh, players how good this kid plays. And he's, I say about another year or two, I don't think anybody's going to beat him. No, I think he plays great. Uh, he's uh, right on top of himself, hungry, got the eye of the tiger. Yeah. He needs a little bit of experience, even though he may win this tournament. I mean, he, he's, you know, in second place right now, and we're playing in the championship. But it'll take him about maybe another, well, you know, a year or so to get that real extra seasoning. But I think he's going to be real tough to beat. Yeah, well, he's got a tough one to match up yeah, with. He's fading the, the hook. <laughs> and he's got, well, he, even though my game's erratic, I still managed to pull that match through. And uh, I feel good. I like playing in the finals. I normally perform well. I mean, that, that was unusually not my best performance, but I managed to win the match. So see what happens. Yeah, good luck, son. We got a veteran and a kid in the finals. Good luck to you. All right, thanks a lot, buddy. <laughs> Certainly do. It'll be a veteran, Mike Siegel, against Danny Harriman, the kid. It is Mike Siegel. Went down to the last game. He broke, ran out, and he wins at 9-8. So the final is set. Danny Harriman, a big surprise, moving to the final round against the veteran, the Hall of Famer, Mike Siegel. That will be the championship match. Congratulations to young Jimmy Wetch. He played so well here, had some opportunities, just could not quite get it done because Mike Siegel, the veteran, comes through in the end, and he wins it 9-8. We hope. Coming up next on Prime, former world champion Mike Siegel, a Hall of Famer, will try to add the Players' Championship to his long list of titles. Siegel, who did not win on the Pro Billiards Tour in 1993, will try to end that drought in the first major event of 1994. The third-ranked Siegel defeated newcomer Jimmy Wetch in the semifinals. His opponent is another newcomer, unranked Danny Harriman, who has shocked the Pro Tour by reaching the final round in his first major event. Harriman joined the tour late last year, then stunned the veteran and top-ranked Nick Varner to reach this championship match. The best of the Pro Billiards Tour for 1994. From the Sheridan Hotel and Convention Center in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, it's the final of the first major event on the Pro Billiards Tour for 1994, the Players' Championship. A matchup between a newcomer, Danny Harriman, and the veteran, Mike Siegel. Welcome to Valley Forge, everyone. I'm John Sanders, and I'm joined for this final match by the rifleman, Buddy Hall. Let's talk about Danny Harriman. Certainly surprised that he has made it all the way to the final. Uh, it is a surprise for a lot of people. I kind of expected him to do well. I didn't really expect him to beat Nick Varner. But the guy's breaking the ball so hard one time, he, he left the whole floor completely. He was about six inches off the floor when he hit the ball. I've never seen that. Uh, he's playing great, breaking the ball's great. He's going to be tough. We'll see if he can keep it going against another veteran here today, Mike Siegel. Good start for his new season. Uh, good, real good start. Uh, I expect Mike to win this match. Uh, he doesn't have to. Uh, Mike doesn't make any mistakes. Uh, he makes all the balls he shoots at. He knows when to play safe. He knows when to go for the ball. Uh, Mike's just going to be real hard for anybody to beat. The newcomer and the veteran, the final of the first major event on the Pro Billiards Tour for 1994, Danny Harriman and Mike Siegel, the Players' Championship to be decided next. Ready for the championship match here in Valley Forge at the Sheraton Hotel and Convention Center. I'll show you how these two players reached the final. Harriman with a surprisingly easy win over Varner in the semifinal. Siegel and Wetch had quite a battle. Siegel winning 9-8 to reach this championship. Let's reset the rules, buddy. Well, up to this point, we play a race to nine, two out of three sets. Now when the TV matches, it's a race to nine, single match. There's no shot clock. It's foul on all balls, it would be ball in hand. We alternate the break. Push outs only after the break, and the referee has the final decision. He's our boss. It was Harriman 9 4 over Varner, and Siegel 9 8 over Wetch. Let's set it for the lag for the opening break. <coughs> Mike Siegel knows this will not be an easy match. He has a lot of respect for his opponent. He'll match. have the first break. In his semifinal match, Mike Siegel was able to break and run out six times. 
the problem is he didn't do it on his first break, and that put him behind. He was working out of the hole the rest of the way. Yeah, he said he played a little bad that match. He broke and ran out six racks. Okay, he's still got the one ball going in. And another. He makes two in his opening break, opening game of this match. A race to nine, and the winner is the player's champion for 1994. He just played this in, draw the cue ball back just a little bit for position on the four. Nicely done. Looks like he just followed forward just a little bit here in this shoot and stop. 99 professional tour victories. He's been world champion. He's won just about everything. That's how he's in the Hall of Fame. Certainly very well known to players, the millions of players around the country. No problem with the five. It should set up pretty well, shouldn't it? Yes, all he has to do is just pop the cue ball in, bring the cue ball back just a little bit. Pop the six in, bring the cue ball back just a little bit. He's got him a nice little angle here. He just cut the seven in, float down table for the eight. He just doesn't want to overshoot it. He checked himself, make sure he doesn't touch anything. It's foul on all balls. He wants it to stop. So now he wants it to roll. <laughs> he's straight in. I believe he's okay. He'll just draw it back. Siegel trying to break and run out in game one. This is what he did so very well in his semifinal victory. A seesaw match that went right down to the final game. Look out. Well, he caught the point. He's perfect. Only the nine remaining. And with that, Mike Siegel able to break and run out. And take game one of this best of nine, waiting for his opportunity. Harriman, and Danny Harriman, who played so very well against Varner, finds himself down 1-0. Of course, remember Varner won the first game easily on a, by making a ball. We pick it up now in game two. And a great shot there by Siegel as Harriman was not able to break and run out. And that is how Mike Siegel made short work of the second game. And that really gives him the advantage, especially, Buddy, the way that he's breaking the ball. Oh, he's breaking the ball. It's great. This is where we pick it up in game three. He's trying to break and run out again. And if he does, this will give him a commanding 3-0 lead. He's checking himself make sure he doesn't foul the nine. If your shirt accidentally reaches down and touches the nine, that's a foul. Foul on all balls. Mike's playing a lot faster. That's uh, not normally Mike. Well, he's playing well, too, yeah, playing which great. is normally Mike, <laughs> which no is matter what right. speed. <laughs> which is normally Mike. He's overshot this a little bit. He's still okay. Moving down to the rail to set up the nine. And for the second time in the first three games, he breaks, runs out, and he takes a commanding 3-0 lead in this championship match. Stay with us. Now, Danny Harriman has some early problems here. He is down 3-0 to Mike Siegel in this race to nine, and we come back, pick it up as he has the break in game four. He was not able to break and run out in game two. He does make a ball, makes two balls. Makes two and almost three. Almost three. Now, what kind of a table does he have in front of him now? Uh, he has a, a little bit of a problem with the 5-9. Watch this break. And again, <laughs> we saw him do that in the semifinal. Comes okay. all the way off. The floor with I, both feet. I cannot get over that. That's amazing. <laughs> he has a problem down here, maybe, with the five nine eight. 
Uh, he's a, play the one ball. All right, he, he has a problem down here with the five man. Here's the one and the cue ball. He needs to play the one in the side and just come two rails out softly there for the two ball or for the three ball in the corner pocket. Slow down. Okay, he's overhit it, but it looks like he, he's okay. He's got a shot at the side pocket. And that's just a question of, he, uh, of whether he can get on the four. He was uh, a cool customer in that semifinal win over Nick Varner. Now, what can he do here? He needs to play to the inside of the four. He needs to stay on the inside of the four so he can draw the cue ball back to the position that he's standing at down there. Uh, he'll have to go across the table with the cue ball. Uh, so he has to make sure that he's to the inside of the four. The, the kid plays pretty good. He's got a, a pretty good tell about the game. It's, he's gotten where he wanted to. Now Harriman here in game four really needs to break and run out. Try to pull himself back into this match. Did he go far enough? I believe so. I believe he can play the five seven combination. I don't see any problems from there. Good job. He's just trying to get on the board now. That's right. Get something in the column. All right. After Siegel had two break and run outs in the first three games. And it looks like here in the fourth game that the answer is going to come from Harriman. You just play it nicely across. There you go. Play the nine ball in the corner pocket, and he's going to be on the board. And this was the game that he needed to get back in the match. The break, the run out. Some crowd support here at Valley Forge at the Sheraton Hotel and Convention Center because Danny Harriman got himself on the board. We move now to game five. The break belongs to Siegel. He's done such a great job and he keeps right on knocking him in on the break. He made two balls on the break again, but it wasn't the one ball. He didn't make the one that time. But that great break really set up the table for him, enabled him to keep on a roll with the break and run out in game five. And a four to one lead. Siegel able to keep the pressure on by winning game five. And in game six, the break went right back. I kind of like the alternate format. Uh, it certainly, if you're behind, gives you the opportunity to come back because you know you're going to get a certain amount of breaks oh, in your match. Right. right. You don't, just don't want to get too far behind. He came up dry. He didn't make a ball on the break. And that's been unusual. Brings Mikey back to the table. And it definitely brought him back to the table as we look back at this game. Yeah. I don't know if that's, uh, is he gonna come two rails? It must be gonna play two rails around the eight. One, two, two. and around the eight. You called it. <laughs> they just pull the cue ball back a little bit here. Draw the cue ball straight back so he'll have a nice easy shot on the nine. Mike seems a little nervous. Uh, he seems like he's playing a little extra fast. Faster than normal, I think. Uh, you've seen him play a lot. I've seen him play a lot. And uh, he does seem to have pretty good rhythm, though. He's, he's nailing everything that he has to, and he's developed and moved out to a very comfortable lead. And, he had the break trying to make it four in a row on the break and run outs in game seven, but he ran into some problems. Uh, here he's, uh, he's gonna try to make this ball, I believe, bring the cue ball around to the side. Yeah, Beautifully so. done. Beautifully done. He's taking deep breaths. He's uh, acting like he's a, a little nervous, a l little maybe more so than he should be. Boy, that's a nice shot. He just knows how to play, this guy does. That beautiful shot set up his break and run out in game seven.
Mike Siegel very much in control. He is stalking another championship, taking a 6-1 lead over Danny Harriman. And as we come back, Danny Harriman had the break. Game eight and a beautiful shot there. Oh, what a shot. He jumped his ball. He got a little cue there. He calls the frog. He's got another one that's a little shorter than that one. He calls it the tadpole. <laughs> <laughs> well, the frog worked out very yeah. well. He had to come up over the nine. Made the shot. Oh, that's a good shot. It's a shot he really needed because he's trailing 6-1. There's no margin for error for him now. Right. Not in a race to nine. Right. But you have to give some of the credit here. He, he's had some problems, but Mike Siegel has jumped on his mistakes, and Mike Siegel simply hasn't made any when he's had the break. He has a problem here with the four ball. He's, uh, uh, he's really got a problem with the four. I don't know exactly what he'll try to do here. He's going to try to pop it back maybe and bank the four. I'd say he's going to try to bank the four here. If he can bank the four and just set his cue ball down right there. Uh, the four eight combination uh, is on if you can get a, a little better line on it. He doesn't seem to think so the way he's looking at it. No, he'll he'll end up banking this ball, I believe, just like this. And just uh, he'll stop his cue ball right there. Just like that. A critical shot, and he made it. He had options to play the eight, but uh, I like that. If he can make that one, he's out. He's if that one goes in, it's uh, Katie bar the door because the five straight in and everything's laying in the hole. Then he didn't leave much to doubt. He slammed it in there. Yeah, he just draw the cue ball back, bounce it off the rail a little bit. I believe you hit the rail a little below the side pocket here. Come out for the seven. He called a foul. He called touched the foul. Eight. And he that could be eight. a fatal mistake for this young man. The referee called the foul. Foul on all balls. If his shirt touches a ball, that's a foul. Danny Harriman does not agree, but well, maybe he didn't even feel it as it brushed the ball. Oh, he didn't feel it. Uh, his shirt just happened to drop down and touch the ball. He's not used to playing fouls on all balls. Mike Siegel trying to take advantage of that mistake and move out to a commanding lead in this championship match. You make a mistake against Mike Siegel, you pay for it. Yes, you do. You pay the piper. Mike Siegel definitely in control. You think he'll calm down a little bit now? Well. Huh? And there, you saw the referee looking. He saw the shirt. He called the foul. Right. And that was the mistake that really hurt Danny Harriman because it enables Mike Siegel to take a commanding lead. We'll be back. Welcome back. Our championship final, Mike Siegel and Danny Harriman. Every time Harriman has made a mistake, this man, the veteran, the Hall of Famer, has capitalized it. His break has been dynamite until uh, then. <laughs> up to this And he point. can't believe it. Yeah, he drew his cue ball right in the side. That's the first mistake he's made on the break. It looked like he, it looked like he kind of let up on it a little bit. This, this is now Danny's got a shot that's, that's coming right after the foul. He just committed a foul, uh, a shirt foul actually. Uh, he touched the ball with his shirt. Uh, see how that'll affect him uh, in this particular rack. I kind of believe he'll shake it off though. Well, Harriman has to take advantage of this mistake. His opportunity with the ball in hand, he must make Siegel pay for that. Siegel has raced out to a 7-1 to one lead, and this is the first time in the match that Mike Siegel has not gotten the break and then run out. Now he's got to be careful now not to foul. See, he's not even looking. He didn't even look at the seven. See, that's inexperienced. And I don't know that, you know, you couldn't tell from this angle, but it looked like the shirt was right on the ball right. again. The referee didn't walk around and look at it that time. He may have been on the seven ball. Now, as coming up as a young player, do you not always play those rules about the ball in hand on all fouls? Well, only on TV matches. That's the only place it ever shows up. Here he just played one rail out. I thought he'd play two rails out, but he come one rail down and, and he hit it perfect. He's straight in. 
Now he needs to make sure he has a nice little angle so he can shoot the five in and come across the table for the six. Okay, he's got a nice little angle. He'll just pop the rail, hit the side rail, and come over to this side of the table to play the six ball in uh, the corner pocket down here. Mike Siegel scratching on the break here in game nine. He'll come across like so. And watch the shirt. <laughs> Some of the fans want him to take it off. <laughs> he wants to make sure he <laughs> he's looking now. He'll learn about those kinds of things. Well, it could very well cost him the tournament by not, uh, you know, by not being conscious of that. You're right. You don't have to bite. The, you don't have to get bit very many times to start drawing your hand back. As the old timers used to say, you touch a hot stove once or twice, you quit touching it. <laughs> well, he's drawing his ball. Oh, he, and he drew it nicely. Spins it off that far rail, or the near rail, and all the way back. Puts him in good shape. And the fans have enjoyed his play here all week long, and certainly they'd like to see this young man perform well in the final. But he has a lot of work to do. The referees have commented on him this week. They have said, my, what a nice guy. The one of the referees said something to him. He said, yes, sir. <laughs> They're just not, <laughs> I mean, he's just a really nice kid. And on the foul that was called, I don't think he necessarily agreed, but then he didn't jump up and down and argue or no, anything no. like that. No, no, he took it like a man, went over and sat down just like he's supposed to. That is just his second game of this match. Mike Siegel scratched on the break, and that gave him the opportunity. Danny Harriman gets on the board again. It's now 7-2, to two, and Harriman has the break. You can lose games a lot of different ways. Look out. Wow. He scratched on the break. You can lose games a lot of different ways, but I don't think any of the top players have ever found a way that they like yet. <laughs> there isn't any way, is there? <laughs> no, I don't think so. None that I know of. No. He returned the favor after Mike Siegel scratched on his break in game nine. Danny Harriman comes right back with the same result in game ten. Mike will play this two rails out. He wants to make sure that he has an angle. He don't want to have to come across table. So he'll just, he want to be able to come straight back up. He'll try to get straight in on the five ball now so he can draw the cue ball straight up for the six. He'll do his best to get straight in. Okay, he's not quite straight in, but I believe he's straight enough. Seems a little nervous. He is nervous. He's always nervous. Sure a fine player. Isn't he? Absolutely. One of the best, if not the best. And after not winning a tournament last year, to win a major like the Players' Championship would possibly set up a great 94 for him. Oh, yeah. If he can get out, he will take an 8-2 lead. The only mistake he has made so far was scratching on the break in game nine. Harriman made him pay for that and then promptly scratched on his break in game 10. And it looks like Mike Siegel is going to make him pay for that. All yeah, right. On the hill. So that's it. We it's call, now 8-2. We call that the hill in the pool <laughs> world. When they get one game away, they're on the hill. He's there. Top pros like Mike Siegel has the break with a chance to wrap it up. That is unusual for him. That's the first time that uh, he's broken the balls and uh, not made, made a ball. There's Jack the Talon, the president of Worldwide Collectibles Incorporated, so much a part of uh, television coverage here on the Pro Billiards Tour, and we're certainly glad to see him on hand, enjoying all of the competition and watching Siegel now, who has to turn the table over to Harriman. Oh, he doesn't want to go too far. <laughs> I guess the question is, can he get to that two? Okay, the way I would play this shot is right here with the two, I just play one rail out for the three ball. Just shoot it in, hit the end rail, come one rail out, like so. 
The only problem that he has here is uh, maybe himself. If, uh, if he happens to get careless and get out of line or something like that, but everything is laying right there for him. Well, obviously with Mike Siegel leading 8-2, he cannot afford any okay. mistakes. Let's shoot this one in the corner, draw your cue ball back. He comes across the top of it there, he's in trouble. He may have to bank this ball. That's not where he wanted to leave that. No, it isn't. He may elect to go down table here. Here's the two. He could bank it across the corner like so. Bring the cue ball to this area right here. Isn't that a pretty tough bank, though, with that cue ball being so close uh, to the four? It's a very tough bank uh, from there. Uh, you know, he's a young gun. He's a, a kid, a new kid on the block. He's liable to shoot. But if it were me, I might would duck on that shot. He's hooked himself. He's going to have to get his frog out. Mike can't believe the shot. But he left himself with more work to be done. Mike can't believe he shot at it is what Mike can't believe. Mike would have never shot at that. He would have played safe. And that hit the center of the pocket. But I guess the feeling for Danny Harriman is, hey, I got to try to make something happen right now. Exactly. I can't take any chances. I've got to try to do it myself. Here's the nine ball. He's hooked behind the nine. So he's went to get his frog. He's going to try to jump over this ball and cut the five in the corner. Isn't that tougher with it so close to the rail? Very tough. Very tough. I don't believe he'll kick at this. I believe he'll be shooting here. I would shoot if I was down eight to two. Well, he went ahead and gambled on the bank shot, and then he got himself in trouble, tucked behind the nine. He may just elect to jump it without the jump cue. He may use his own cue to jump it. That's what he's doing. He's using his own cue to jump this. He's not using the frog. Do or die. The problem was nothing fell. Right, but he's, he's created a lot of confusion over on this left-hand side of the table. Uh, Mike has a problem here dealing with the six. Now, do you think he was trying to go off that rail or trying to hit the ball directly? No, he was trying to hit the ball going in directly. Uh, Mike probably will try to, try to go right into the six ball here. Uh, might play the five straight in and go right into the six with a cue ball. Okay, he's went into the seven. See, he still has a problem. He has to... This bank shot is really not that easy a shot, but it is the game ball. If he makes the six across the corner, then this lights matches, out. Lights out. Well, Mike Siegel's been in this position many times. If anybody can make the shot the way he wants to, it's Mike Siegel. Okay, see, everything is really tough here. It wouldn't surprise me a bit to just see Mike duck, just play safe. He, he could play the billiard here, but I wouldn't play the billiard here, I don't believe. I'd do it just like that. You have so many options. Uh, you can go right into the balls. You can go, or you can take the bank, which I believe he was semi-ducking, you know. He semi. Played, yeah, play it to the <laughs> well, professional Not as aggressive side. as he might, right? Right. Take it if it goes, but if it doesn't go, he's going to hit it where there's really not much left. Harriman trying to pull it out. All the way down and in. Great shot. And he's perfect on the 7-8 combination. That he was the shot he needed. He landed in a superb position there. That's exactly where you would want the cue ball to stop. Wonderful shot. Nestles in that corner pocket. That gives him a chance. The combination. He's still alive. Yes, he is. And he will have the break in game 12 if he gets out here. It's not over yet. But certainly with an 8-2 lead, there's plenty of breathing room still for Mike Siegel. Make it 8-3. Danny is really having a good time. He's really enjoying playing. We have more to go. It's 8-3 here in Valley Forge. 
Back at Valley Forge, I'm John Sanders, along with the rifleman Buddy Hall, and Danny Harriman has dodged one bullet. He has to break, and he has to get out to keep this match going. He's still down, 8-3, in a race to nine. Well, he, he made a ball on the break uh, and has a shot. Uh, it's, it's a tough shot, but he has a shot. First one might be the key to setting this whole thing up. Right, if he can knock the one in and get position on the two, Here's the one ball. Here's the two. I believe that Danny may play this ball all the way down in the corner. Bringing the cue ball one rail across. This way he's got to duck that side pocket. This is the corner pocket that he's shooting at. Since Danny has fallen so far behind, almost every shot that he looks at is critical. It's a must shot for him. And, you know, according to how he feels here, he may, uh, he may duck. If myself, if I were this far behind, I would shoot. But he may not. No, he's shooting. That's the way he wants to play it. He got it. And he set himself up for the two ball. All right. From Springfield, Missouri, the Show Me State. And he has definitely put on quite a show here on the Pro Billiards Tour at the Players' Championship this week here in Valley Forge. This is a tough shot for most people. He's hooked himself. He does not like the result. No, it's, it's a tough shot. When you're jacked up on the rail like that and you have to execute a shot and play position from there, when you hit down on the cue ball, it actually leaves the table and you don't make contact exactly where you're looking. So the cue ball may act a little strange to you there. He hit it a little fuller than what he'd want to and ended up behind the seven. I'm sure that he'll use some kind of jump shot on this. He must keep making balls. Okay, he's got the frog, the green cue. Very close. Those are just so tough to control, yes, especially a distance like that. Yes, they are. And when the ball's in the air, like it's bouncing when it hits the bed of the table. So you can see that right here, it may not hit exactly where you're looking because it's coming down at an angle. It's not rolling into the ball. Mike Siegel now with a chance to get out and finish it. <laughs> he's talking to himself. He couldn't find an ear man, so he's talking to himself. This friend of mine told me once, he said, it's all right to talk to yourself. It's even okay to answer. Just never talk to yourself and say, huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> I don't think we've ever heard Mike do that. <laughs> no. Doesn't want to move that cue ball too much. Bring it back in that area. For the six. Marching closer to the Players' Championship is Hall of Famer Mike Siegel. Oh, he's stretching, stretching, that's dangerous. Very dangerous. He's going to stretch. Oh, ball, yeah. Oh, he said, oh. <laughs> oh, he got straight with it. He got straight with his shot. He didn't want to do that. No, he didn't. Which way does he go? Oh, man, he has a... Oh. Yeah. Uh, I might would even bank this ball. I don't know. Uh, you, you, it's just a player preference here. You shoot it in the corner, or you shoot it in the side, or you bank it. I believe I would bank it. That's what he does. He banks it? No. My goodness. Oh, my. He didn't like stretching. He just stretched and hit it. That's a dangerous shot. When you get, you're better off getting the bridge and taking your time and cinching things up. Oh! 
<laughs> ouch, ouch, ouch. He knows he had it right there. But Harriman is not dead yet. He has been given a life here in game 12. <laughs> Mikey is not a happy camper. He gets out, picking up the eight and the nine. We go to game 13. It's 8-4. With the alternating breaks, he knows he's still in it. Now let's look at that again. There's more to be done for Mike Siegel to win this player's championship. We'll see if he can do it when we come back. Here we go. It's 8-4. Mike Siegel leading. He was comfortably in front at 8-2. Let a couple get away, especially the last one, but now he has the break again in game 13. There went two balls. He's back to his old tricks. He's either made it he scratched once on the break. That was back in game nine. He did not make any in game 11, but here he comes in game 13. Right back at him again. He's playing really fast. Uh, he's playing too fast for his game, his, his type of uh, game. He's just playing too fast. You think because he has the big lead, he wants to finish it as quickly as possible? Oh, I don't know. Uh, maybe just a little nervous. He's playing well. He's just playing fast. He said got perfect. Well, does he combo it? Does he just make I don't the four? Think, I don't think he has either shot. I think he's going to duck. I think he'll just bump it past, like so. I don't think either shot was available to him. The only guy on the tour that does his own commentary while he plays. <laughs> he spotted Mike LeBron over in the bleachers there. I think he made an ear man out of Mike temporarily. Oh, Mike, just he likes to talk as he plays. Well, maybe that's how he relieves some of the tension. All right. Yeah. He may have gotten safe. Might have. Well, I still think he might be able to come off that rail and get a piece of the ball or maybe even make it. We'll see. Danny sits down. Now Mike Siegel. The 41 year old. Against the youngster. Yeah, that's all he has there. He's going to try to rail first the ball. He missed, missed it. it. He missed that ball trying to come around on it. There is life for Harriman, although he doesn't have an easy shot either. He's ducking. That's nasty. That is nasty. Yes. You have to be careful here of the foul. If you have to shoot directly over the seven. Look at Danny. He He's loves having it. fun now, isn't he? <laughs> <You're at. laughs> yes. He's finally making a match of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is frozen to the seven. Mike shooting over it. Hit it well. He avoids the possibility of the foul. He doesn't like to use that bridge, but that time he did. Used it to his advantage. Now let's see what Danny Harriman can do. Oh, left himself in great shape. He's got to be careful of the fouls. He, he could foul one of those balls with his clothing. It's already cost him ball in hand earlier in this match. Back in game eight. He brushed a ball with his shirt and was called for it. Yes, he was. He should be able to get out here, don't you think? I think so, yes. I, I, I don't believe it's any problem here. It's just a matter of time. He just shoot this in, float down just a little bit for the nine. He may stun it down a little bit, hit it a little, I like so. Mike Siebel, Siegel has opened the door just a crack. And Danny Harriman is trying to sneak through. Danny's trying to put his whole foot in it. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Eight-five now. 
<laughs> and it'll be Danny Harriman to break when we come back to Valley Welcome back once again to the Sheridan Hotel and Convention Center in Valley Forge. Along with Buddy Hall, I'm John Sanders. This is game 14 and a critical break coming up for Danny Harriman, who is trying to battle his way back in this match. He was down 8-2. It's now 8-5. And he's come up dry. And you, sometimes you can't even will him in. That's right. Looks like Mike, all he has to do is work his elbows here. <laughs> Are you saying that the table is set up pretty well? <laughs> uh, yeah, they're laying really nice. Yeah, they're all right out in the open. The two's right here, the three's over there, the four's right with it. You just shoot the two in, float over a little bit, shoot the three in, stop, shoot the four in, draw it back a little bit. It's uh, really a... The only danger would be carelessness on his part. All right, just getting out of line. Well, he's made a couple of mistakes. He had some opportunities to finish this off earlier, and I have to think that he's not going to let it slip away this time. Well, it, this is what I would do. I'd just draw it back a little bit, play the five in the side, play the six up in the corner. Okay, now here's where he doesn't want to get careless. He wants to make sure that he has a nice shot on the seven to get to the eight. The eight ball is his game ball. If he knocks the seven and gets position on the eight. You notice he made sure that that sleeve of that shirt did not rub that seven ball. Right. He's in great shape with this angle here. Okay. There's nothing that Danny can do but watch as the veteran, the Hall of Famer, Mike Siegel, marches closer to the Players' Championship. Yep. All he's got to do is execute this shot. This is the, just like being the nine ball. Gives himself an angle on the nine ball. And Danny Harriman, who put up the valiant fought, fight, had the great victory over Varner in the semifinal. Just fell too far behind early in this match. This is for the championship. This is Mike Siegel has won the Players' Championship in Valley Forge for 1994. Siegel did not win a tournament in 93. He strikes early. A major win for Mike Siegel here in 1994. <laughs> Mike's talking about how nervous he is. His 100th professional tour victory. How about a tip of the hat to Danny Harriman, but it is the veteran Mike Siegel. He wins it 9-5. We'll be back. Mike Siegel adds some more hardware to his trophy case, winning 9-5. Standing by with both players. First with Danny, let's go to Buddy Hall. Buddy? Well, Danny, partner, you were down 7-1. to one. You made a driving comeback. You brought it back to 8-5. to five. Well, Great match. Thank you, buddy. Uh, I had a lot of fun playing, and I feel lucky just to be... I feel good about being just where I'm at right now. This is my third pro tournament, and... Uh, I didn't win today, but there's next time. It was Mike's day today, and uh, I think hopefully you'll see a lot more of me. So I know we'll see a lot more of you. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. Back to our captain, yeah. Mr. Mike Siegel, in the winner's circle one more time. What do you think? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. I, I, I hate to fade his game in another <laughs> couple months or so. He's a great player, and he's very young. He's got that look in his face. Reminds me of myself when I was that age. And... Uh, well, I feel very lucky. That was that was a tough tournament for me to win my hundredth tournament. It's been on my mind for about a year and a half now. I finished second a couple tournaments, so I think I got that off my mind. I think I'll do do good now for the rest of the year. Right, we're going to start calling you the Century Man. The Century Man. Right. Now to meet the man that's here with the money and the trophies from Worldwide Collectibles, the president, Jack Talon. Thank you, Mike. I congratulate you, and on behalf of Worldwide Collectibles, my honor, oh, and pleasure. Thing. Wow. Thank you very much, Jack. Uh, your 100th win. <laughs> Can I lift that up or I what? I don't know. It's kind of heavy. <laughs> Congratulations to Mike Siegel, number 100, 9-5 over Danny Harriman. A young man fought hard, but Mike Siegel broke out strongly, built a 7-1 lead. He was very tough in his early games. Some chances, though, later in the match as Harriman did rally, got back in it at 8-5, but in the end, it was the ability of Mike Siegel to break and run out 
and he went on to victory in Valley Forge. For Buddy Hall, I'm John Sanders. Thanks for being with us on.